now. One of the debates getting a real buzz online today, and one of the most discussed stories is certainly in terms of traffic to various sites, the face-off in the United States. It's the vice presidential hopefuls that are getting all the publicity today, Joe Biden and Sarah Palin. The untested but charismatic Republican is topping almost every blog chart across the web right now, seemingly creating more buzz than McCain and Obama combined. So what is it about Sarah Palin that generates such strong opinions? And is this good or bad for the Republican Party? Well, joining us from Washington tonight is Stephen Dynan of the Washington Times. And in New York, I'm joined from there by Republican commentator George Igen. Uh, well, George and Steve, welcome to you. Thank you for actually being part of the program tonight. Uh, what does Sarah Palin have to do, Stephen? She has to avoid mistakes, most, most importantly, foremost. Uh, you know, as, as you said in your introduction to, uh, to, to, to the debate, she's got uh, untested is a very good word to describe her. She's had experience with debates on the Alaska stage, but nothing like what she's going to see tonight. And most important, it's, it's a one-time only thing where the presidential candidates get to debate three times. She's got one chance. She had a pretty good appearance at the uh, Republican convention a month ago. She's been mostly under wraps with a few sort of tricky interviews that she's had in the in the interim but this is her chance to reach 60 million people at once she's just got to avoid uh, messing it up essentially George do you see it that way I mean the, the Katie Couric thing was pretty squirm making wasn't it uh, I watched it today and I winced to be quite honest so I think I think we have to keep in mind this is a game of expectations and you have to be a pretty delusional partisan to conclude that the expectations have not been set rather low for Sarah Palin this evening so I do agree with my colleagues she just has to avoid any major errors and she also has to hope that uh, Joe Biden who like John McCain is certainly not the winner of Miss Congeniality in the United States Senate might go on the attack and appear a little bit grumpy with her and then she just has to smile and appear very charismatic and she comes out looking like the winner yeah, Joe Biden can't afford to be, appear to be supercilious, can't afford to be patronizing, can he? Despite the age gap and the experience gap between the two of them. Steve? Most importantly, he, goes, he, he has a habit of droning on and, and essentially, you know, I cover Congress and, and uh, talking with him, you can run into him in the hallways and talk with him. And he has a habit of going on and getting into policy <laughs> it, in a debate like this where the short answers and convincing answers are going to be key. That's going to be his challenge is keeping it short and for, for that matter, not getting into one of these sort of exaggerations that's caused him problems. Let's have a look at some of the, the bloggers. We've been trying to tap into the bloggers field, which is, I'm sure you guys know because you're on it as well. Um, is absolutely full of this stuff. Kelly McParland is an example here, writing, if I was McCain, I'd let Palin be Palin. Send her out against Joe Biden. Let him drop the names and recite the history. She doesn't need to match him obscure capital for obscure capital. She's not from Washington. She's from Alaska. And she's not a grizzled veteran of the Senate wars. That's her greatest weapon. Her party should let her use it. George, do you think they will? Uh, I think they will. The trouble is that may work in a five or ten minute clip. This is you know, more than an hour worth of, of give and take and uh, she's going to be hard pressed to come up with some specifics and uh, you know, I, I think a lot of Republicans are very concerned about that this evening. Okay, conservative commentator Kathleen Parker uh, has suggested this, uh, that Palin should basically quit. You know, we should get rid of, uh, she should stand aside let them choose some other candidate. It seems an almost impossible strategy to be advocating, but Kathleen Parker certainly believes she is so much a liability and will be proved such tonight. She should do that. Can that possibly happen, Stephen? What will be the mechanics of replacing her? Well, it can't happen for, for one very particular reason. Palin, the American people are sort of, uh, they're split into three groups on her. You have a group that absolutely uh, hates her and won't be brought around. You have a group in the middle. But more importantly, you have maybe 30, uh, 35 percent of the public, uh, Republican partisans, who absolutely love her. And they got very excited about John McCain. Some of them on the fringes have, have broken off. But I'll tell you from... Every time I write about her, the calls I get from people accusing me, yeah, I'll write a straight down the middle fair story, and people will call and yell at me for not having called her Alaska Governor Sarah Palin on every reference, thinking I'm doing her a disservice. She has fans who are incredibly devoted to her, and dropping her would be, uh, McCain just can't do it. Uh, let's just have a look at a cartoon. We're going to show um, our viewers here. You guys probably can't see this, but uh, it illustrates some people are viewing her. A gun-loving, polar bear-hating, Bible-carrying Alaskan. Uh, those are all the prejudices thrown at once. George, do you think she is being got at? Is the, is the media world just turning on this woman in an unfair way? Uh, the, the hostility with which the candidacy of Sarah Palin has been met by the left wing is, is extraordinary. 
Um, I think there's a lot of resentment about the fact on, on the part of uh, Democrats and liberals that Hillary Clinton has been working for so many years in her, in her pantsuits uh, to become the first woman to, to reach the executive branch. And here comes Sarah Palin glides in on a glacier wearing a skirt and she usurps the spotlight from Hillary Clinton. I think there's extraordinary jealousy, frankly, over that fact. Stephen Dining, good to talk to you. And George A. Jen as well. Pleasure to have you on the show, gentlemen. Thank you very much.